and guests from around the world. I want to welcome you to this conference on inclusive democratic participation to prevent and counter violent extremism. This is a global conference on preventing violent extremism because extremism indeed constitutes a global phenomenon and is not to be associated with any single region or any country on earth. This threat exists all over the globe and it's worsening in those places where democracy is regressed or where human rights are disregarded or rule of law is neglected. I also want to say on behalf of the community of democracies, it's worth our time to underline that the venue of this conference is intentional. We would like to commend the Moroccan approach to violent extremism as it strives to be multidimensional and includes policies aimed at addressing violent extremism at political, religious, economic, and security levels. Some of those efforts we've noted include maintaining political stability by strengthening democracy and diplomacy, through fighting the forces of radicalization by expanding educational programs that promote moderation, cultural openness, and critical thinking, and providing regional support and capacity building to fight the spread of extremism and its groups. I believe that these two days will be important in sharing best practices among democracies, and I think we're going to, over the next two days, spur new thinking, fresh thinking, in democratic inclusion, and in encountering extremism. And so let me officially begin this conference by inviting the Foreign Minister of Morocco, His Excellency Mr. Nasser Bourita, to address the assembly. Your Excellency. Your Excellency, Chairman of the Executive Council of the Community of Democracies, Mr. Secretary General of the Community of Democracies, Madam President of the CNDH, Mr. Secretary General of the Rabita, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to begin by thanking you for your participation in this global conference organized by the Community of Democracies and its Moroccan partners, which is part of our joint project to highlight good practices in the prevention and countering violent extremism through inclusive, inclusive democratic participation. Inclusive democratic participation presents today not only a tool for the promotion and improvement of democracy, but also a tool for, to prevent and counter violent extremism. Today, more efforts are needed to strengthen cohesion and help local actors build resilience in the face of conflicts and divisions. Creating such an environment for empowerment and inclusive democratic participation gives young women and men the opportunity to become active global citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, countering violent extremism is not enough. It must also be prevented. This can be achieved through several prevention tools, including promotion of human rights, the strengthening of dialogue across borders, the empowerment of young women and men, and the promotion of education. It is precisely for the youth that the risk is the highest. As the prime targets of recruitment strategies, they too are victims of extremist violence. In the face of such threats, security responses are insufficient and will not address the many underlying factors that fuel violent extremism and lead you to join violent extremist groups. We need also the soft power of education. Most importantly, we need quality education that is meaningful, inclusive, and equitable. Violent extremism exacerbates the problems of governance and inequalities that are already present in some countries and societies and which is why it is necessary 
to integrate a gender per perspective into initiatives to prevent violent extremism. Today, the place of women in peacekeeping and the prevention of violent extremism is crucial and we must count on their full participation in the decision-making processes related to security. For their part, social media plays a key role in preventing violent extremism, especially for youth. We, that's why effective actions are needed, uh, need to be taken, both online and offline, to prevent and counter violent extremism and radicalization on the internet. This includes helping to develop arguments to counter extremism content online, fight hate speech on the internet, and build the capacity of relevant actors to develop innovative responses, all while promoting the protection of freedom of expression, privacy, and other fundamental freedoms. Ladies and gentlemen, Aware of the real danger of violent extremism, the Kingdom of Morocco has put in place an ambitious strategy to counter and prevent this threat, which has contributed in the medium and long term to an inclusive democratic participation. Under the leadership of His Majesty the King Mohammed VI, Morocco has made the consolidation of democracy and more particularly inclusive democratic participation, the foundation for building a modern and democratic society. The kingdom's deep, deep, the kingdom's deep conviction is that there can be no development without stability, and no stability without democracy. The multiple reforms engaged within the high vision of His Majesty on the constitutional, legislative, and reg regulation levels all converge towards the realization of an inclusive democratic participation, more particularly of women and youth, and this on, a base, on the basis of the common ground of international instruments of human rights. Today, our country is in the process of finalizing its first national action plan on women peace and security in application of Security Council Resolution 1325 and on the basis of an inclusive and participatory approach involving all the stakeholders. More than just a box to check in the list of obligations arising from this resolution, this national action plan intended to be a real tool for transformation aimed at catalyzing efforts to strengthen women's resilience in the face of emerging threats in an increasing complex regional and international environment. This action plan will serve as a framework for the convergence of national policies in the thematic areas of preventive diplomacy, mediation, peacekeeping, promotion of a culture of peace and equality, and women's economic participation. Ladies and gentlemen, Morocco is recognized worldwide as an important contributor in the fight against terrorism and the prevention of radicalism. As such, Morocco has co-chaired the Global Counter-Terrorism Forum, GCTF, with the Netherlands since 2016 and was re-elected in 2019 for a third term alongside Canada for the period 2022. His Majesty has established in 2015 the Mohammed V Institute for the training of Imams, which provides religious training to about 1,000 religious attendants from different foreign countries every year, with the objective of countering extremism drift through a better knowledge of the practice of Islam. Finally, the opening in Morocco of the UN Office for Counterterrorism and Training in Africa on, the, on June 24, 2021, 
is a continuation of the efforts made by our country to create a dynamic and advanced training program on the counterterrorism, law enforcement, border security management, prevention of, radi of radicals and human rights in the fight against terrorism. This dynamic process of human rights and democracy reforms led by Morocco continues to help prevent violent extremism and radical narratives. The Kingdom of Morocco sees the opportunity of being a member of the community of democracies to share its experience in the field and to exchange with other member countries through workshops, meetings and conferences, including this, uh, this one today. I thank you. Thank you, Foreign Minister, for your very insightful remarks, which I believe uh, very well set the tone for the work that we will undertake uh, these next two days. And I would now like to invite the Foreign Minister of Romania, His Excellency Mr. Bodan Arescu, to present remarks on behalf of the Romanian Presidency of the Community of Democracies. Excellency, I invite you to address the conference. Dear Minister Burita, dear Secretary General Garrett, distinguished participants, it is my great pleasure to open, together with Minister Burita and Secretary General Thomas Garrett, this event on the topical theme of preventing and countering violent extremism. I am honored that this conference takes place under the high patronage of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Romania as the Presidency of the Community of Democracies. I thank Minister Burita and the Community of Democracy Secretary General for co-organizing this very timely debate. I also want to use this opportunity to express my deep regret that, because of the domestic political agenda, I am not able to be in Rabat in person for this event today and to also hold political consultations with Minister Burita as we planned. I am confident that we will be able to reschedule soon. Once again, I am truly sorry for this. Ladies and gentlemen, democracies around the world face multiple and sophisticated threats, especially in the context generated by the COVID-19 pandemic, which brought new challenges, but also amplified some of the existing ones, such as violent extremism. This phenomenon has a major disruptive impact on democratic governance. And this is why prevention and countering violent extremism are essential actions to ensure the protection and resilience of our democracies. Our event today is a proof of our determination to work towards this purpose. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, by assuming its role as Presidency of the Community of Democracies for a two-year mandate and a further exceptional extension until September 2022, Romania has reinforced and still continues to do so its strong commitment for promoting and strengthening democratic values, as well as for fostering the international rule of law and fundamental rights and freedoms. Romania has always associated democracy with peace, stability and prosperity. The dynamic calendar of events during our mandate facilitated prolific exchanges of good practices and ideas in this direction. We are proud that during Romania's presidency, foreign ministers and high-level officials from democratic states, civil society representatives and youth gathered at the 10th Ministerial Conference of the Community of Democracies, which I hosted in New York, in the margins of the high-level segment of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly to discuss shared goals and to support democratic resilience. The Bucharest Ministerial Declaration of the Community of Democracies adopted on that occasion underlined the strong determination of our community to remain fully engaged in this endeavor, including by supporting the upcoming Summit for Democracy organized by the U.S. administration. The declaration also encompasses the commitment of the COD Governing Council member states to, I quote, strongly condemn all acts of violence, including terrorism and violent extremism conducive to terrorism, motivated by racism, xenophobia, ethnic, religious or belief-based hatred, gender discrimination and political platforms which incite such acts, end of quote. Being aware of the complexity of this phenomenon, I want to underline that understanding the causes of radicalization leading to terrorist acts represent a key process. Therefore, the earlier the process of awareness is triggered at the level of society, the more thorough and long-term the results are. Lack of economic and social opportunities, 
perpetuating inequalities. Fragile societies and the weak state power are among the root causes of this phenomenon. Violent extremism is developed and fueled by hate, ignorance, or distorted interpretations. Celebrating cultural diversity by promoting and protecting all forms of pluralism remains one of the most important ways to fight radicalization, alongside with investments in education, promoting tolerance, inclusion, and creating conditions for individuals to prosper. Efforts are also needed for institutional capacity building, assisting with the return of state authority in areas where it is weakened and with wider governance reform. Ladies and gentlemen, while violent extremism could stem from radical, religious, or political ideologies, this long-known phenomenon is now exacerbated through new radicalization enablers. Specifically, the malign use of internet and social media platforms are currently employed by extremist groups for disseminating propaganda, proliferation of hate speech, profiling new recruits, and enhancing radicalization. In order to counter violent extremism in our societies or foreign influences, we must step up by acting in a coordinated manner, pursuing clear objectives in accordance with international law and international humanitarian law. Allow me to share with you a four-step pragmatic approach which I think it could be useful and which I would like to encourage you to further analyze and develop during your debates. A first step in preventing and countering violent extremism should be to enhance and expand educational programs with a whole-of-society approach, promoting inclusivity and tolerance. In the current context, a specific attention should be placed to women and children in refugee camps, but also to the reintegration and rehabilitation of the foreign terrorist fighters and their families. Second, we must prevent and combat the financing of violent extremism through a more thorough screening of aid funds and educational material offered by supporters of extremist ideologies. Third, we must enhance our efforts to discourage hate speech and propaganda, as well as online radicalization, recruitment and training for terrorist purposes. And fourth, but certainly not last, finding new ways and means to make the fight against terrorism more effective, namely fighting terrorism with the tools of international law, in particular with international criminal law. And this is why in 2015, during my first mandate as Minister of Foreign Affairs, I advanced the initiative to set up an international court against terrorism. I am still confident that we can find like-minded states and further reflect on this concept in order to move this proposal further. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me also refer in a few words to my views on democracy's role and Romania's international contribution through the community of democracies. Democracy cherishes diversity as much as it promotes inclusivity. Thus, democracy defends freedom of expression and any form of peaceful public demonstration. At the same time, democracy pleads for coexistence of diverse opinions, as long as they do not amount to a flagrant denial of historical facts or to hate speech. Unfortunately, with a growing number of conflicts in many regions of the world in the past years, we have witnessed a dramatic increase of violent extremism. To prevent and combat such condemnable behaviors, the only solution available, available is to increase inclusivity, to stimulate all political and civic participatory processes, in other words, to increase democratic and social resilience. What we need to do is to promote education and democracy literacy for all members of society. Civil society representatives, rightfully supported by governments, are essential in employing the tools to meet this goal. I would also like to emphasize in this context the direct financial support that the Romanian Presidency of the Community of Democracies has given to the Permanent Secretariat for training projects for promoting democratic principles and values. One of them was organized in July this year, when two in-person training sessions gathered 20 Moroccan youth and civil society participants from different regions in Rabat. The training, having the support of the Moroccan Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Rabita Mohammadia of Ulemas, and the National Human Rights Council of Morocco, focused on human rights and education for democracy and countering narratives to prevent radicalization. At the same time, the international scholarship programs currently run by the government of Romania are an instrumental tool in this respect, with multiple benefits by offering improved and easier access to higher education, better career goals, increased eligibility on the job market, networking opportunities or interpersonal skills development, but also in fighting radicalization. Ladies and gentlemen, this conference is also an excellent opportunity to share good practices. As such, from a national perspective, 
I am proud to state that in the current worldwide context, marked by the worrying increase in intolerance, extremism and radicalization, Romania has continually pleaded for keeping these worrying trends high on the European and international agenda and has strived to act as an example in this matter. We have adopted in May this year the first national strategy for preventing and combating antisemitism, xenophobia, radicalization and incitement to hate speech which includes 36 main programs that target antisemitism, self-radicalization, violent incidents against members of the Jewish or Roma community. Romania has also been an active supporter in promoting the adoption this October of the first European strategy on combating antisemitism and fostering Jewish life. Dear friends, while we all agree that inclusive democratic participation is key to prevent and counter violent extremism, solidarity, cooperation and efficient multilateralism are of equal importance in order to ensure the security of our citizens and to preserve our democratic values. Concluding, I convey my gratitude to Minister Burita for co-hosting this conference. I assure you that Romania will continue to consolidate the efforts for preventing and countering violent extremism and terrorism, contributing to the international demarches to foster and protect our societies alongside our democratic values and principles. I also reiterate Romania's commitment to continue throughout its presidency to pursue the goals and values of the community of democracies and further support the community of democracies in pursuing our common objectives. I wish you all enriching discussions today and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency, for those informed and very uh, forward-looking words. And I also want to thank you for the uh, Presidency of Romania's support to this initiative and its support to the inclusion of young people in the political process. I would now like to invite an important partner in this process, the President of the National Human Rights Council, Ms. Amina Boyesh, to address the conference. Madam? Monsieur le Secrétaire Général de, de, de Communauté pour des, des, des Démocraties, Monsieur le Président, Ministre des Affaires étrangères de la Roumanie, Monsieur ministre des Affaires étrangères marocaine de la coopération africaine et des Marocains résidant à l'étranger, mesdames et messieurs, honorables assistants et participants à distance. Je tiens tout d'abord à vous exprimer tout l'intérêt et le plaisir, monsieur le Président, monsieur le Secrétaire général, monsieur le ministre des Affaires étrangères, qui sont les miens, d'être parmi vous et de débattre autour d'une thématique qui hantise notre quotidien et s'installe de plus en plus dans nos actions stratégiques. Permettez-moi de partager avec vous une petite, une grande préoccupation. Depuis quelque temps déjà, nous observons la multiplication d'appels de détresse lancés par des femmes, des hommes de différentes nationalités, y compris des Marocains et des Marocains, ayant rejoint des organisations terroristes, de la panique, des cris et des larmes ont marqué leur témoignage. Ils se sont répentis ou ont découvert la mère réalité de telles organisations. S'agit-il donc d'une rupture avec une idéologie violente qui les a amenés à rejoindre les rangs d'une telle organisation ou bien s'agit-il de désengagement d'un processus violent, mais pas d'une idéologie extrémiste. Réfléchir et débattre autour de ces éléments qui reflètent ces situations est à mon sens d'une importance cruciale pour optimiser nos efforts en matière de déradicalisation. Le discours extrémiste d'incitation à la haine et à la violence, que ce soit dans l'espace public, ou en ligne, se nourrit de la prolifération de fake news et de la multiplication de chambres d'écho, qui, au lieu de nourrir le débat, ne font que creuser l'écart entre les groupes, mènent à la polarisation, la radicalisation, puis la violence. Triptyque, déjà décrit dans l'un des rapports du CNDH en 2020. Mesdames et Messieurs, notre rencontre aujourd'hui nous permettra de croiser les regards de différents responsables, experts, 
acteurs de la société civile, responsables, institutionnels et non institutionnels, et de se pencher sur les signes que je nomme avant-coureurs de l'aboutissement d'un long processus de polarisation, de radicalisation, l'avènement des violences qui doivent amener tout un chacun à rompre avec l'inertie habituelle et agir avec sagacité sur les nombreux facteurs. Nous espérons, nous, communauté des démocraties, de pouvoir marquer ce moment important dans notre rencontre par le renforcement des processus interdépendants de lutte contre les sources nourrissons, les signes avant-coureurs de l'extrémisme violent. Le discours de haine, mesdames et messieurs, et de violence peut prendre plusieurs formes et ses modalités peuvent varier. Son but, quant à lui, constant, amener une personne ou groupe de personnes à rejeter, puis à attaquer un groupe spécifique, perçu comme différent, menaçant, mal intentionné. Nous savons tous et toutes, mesdames et messieurs, que la relation entre extrémisme et développement se nourrit grandement des violations des droits de l'homme, de la perte de référentiel, de l'absence des perspectives, des, 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 des fragilités des uns et des autres, du manque de confiance dans les institutions, l'absence les, et la fragilité des structures de médiation, des inégalités socio-économiques qui se creusent, l'absence de mécanismes de démocratie participative, une culture des, dro des droits de l'homme quasi inexistante. Ainsi, mesdames et messieurs, les institutions nationales des droits de l'homme, CNDH Maroc, sont-elles devenues des acteurs incontournables dans, le système, dans les systèmes nationaux de protection des droits de l'homme, en tant que mécanisme de recours pour les citoyens, mais également un acteur institutionnel indépendant qui leur permet, ce système de protection, d'acter toutes les formes de violation des droits de l'homme, dont l'incitation à la violence, à la discrimination, à la haine, et de prendre les positions qui s'imposent, lesquelles nécessitent parfois le courage de résister aux pressions des groupes radicaux. Le CNDH Maroc, mesdames et messieurs, s'inscrit dans cette perspective et joue un rôle croissant depuis 2019 dans le suivi de contenu de discours d'incitation à la violence surtout dans le monde numérique, nouvel espace, certes d'expression et d'opinion, mais également, malheureusement, de radicalisation, d'embrigadement, notamment avec la propagation des chambres d'écho et de fake news, de diffusion des idéologies radicales, extrémistes et ou racistes. Ce nouveau défi nous interpelle institutionnel et non institutionnel, et nous oblige à innover dans de nouvelles approches de prévention qui puissent prendre en compte la rapidité, la rapidité de diffusion des informations, l'émergence de nouveaux partenaires d'action, notamment les entreprises dans le domaine des nouvelles technologies, l'effacement des frontières nationales au profit d'un front numérique à sensibiliser d'une manière continue des valeurs universelles des droits de l'homme et de l'état de droit. Entre le réel et le virtuel, mesdames et messieurs, nous sommes tous confrontés à de nouveaux paradigmes requérant la mise en place de nouveaux systèmes d'alerte, de prévention et de protection, en commençant d'abord par le normatif sur certains pays nécessaires, mais celui également de l'éducation, les médias, les manuels scolaires pour lutter pour prévenir l'extrémisme et sa promotion. Enfin, mesdames et messieurs, parce qu'élaborer des campagnes de sensibilisation efficaces à l'intention des citoyens, des décideurs nationaux et internationaux, des acteurs étatiques et non étatiques, ne peut se faire sans une connaissance exhaustive du terrain et des spécificités locales. Et c'est en s'appuyant sur des acteurs locaux comme vient de nous, de, nous, de, nous, de nous réitérer et de nous présenter M. le ministre des Affaires étrangères concernant le Maroc, des acteurs locaux touchant le plus d'individus, que l'on peut mettre en place des systèmes de protection fonctionnels et que l'on prévient le mieux. La mise en place des systèmes d'alerte précoce 
et d'actions urgentes en cas de violation des droits de l'homme ou surtout d'incitation à la violence et à la discrimination et donc d'une importance cruciale dans nos actions. Mesdames et messieurs, la polarisation, la, rad la radicalisation, puis la violence, souffrance, peine et tragédie, qu'elle engendre, sont évitables et pouvaient être évitables pour ces, ces centaines de personnes qui nous en lancent et qui lance quotidiennement des appels de détresse. Ce triptyque n'est pas une fatalité auquel on doit se résigner et que l'on doit subir. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Madam President, for your very comprehensive uh, remarks. I would now like to invite the esteemed Secretary General of the Rabita Mohammedia of Ulemas, Mr. Ahmed Abadi. It's not speaking. No. Uh, we will instead proceed uh, towards the major portion of our conference. Let me just say, uh, in concluding this opening session, that I want to thank our speakers for their statements. The conference's main aim is to provide a platform to discuss challenges and good practices in preventing and countering violent extremism through inclusive democratic participation. Together with the two associated youth training sessions that took place in July 2021, funded by Romanian Aid, this event will also initiate a reflection on the means of providing young people in particular with the necessary skills to help counter the scourges of violent extremism, both online and offline, and hopefully will be a means of immunizing youth against hate speech. I'm sure that today and tomorrow we will learn more about this ambitious approach, and this knowledge will serve as an inspiration for the participants of our conference. In concluding, I want to use this opportunity to once again express my deep gratitude to Foreign Minister of the Kingdom of Morocco his Excellency Mr. Nasser Burita for hosting this conference. Thank you, sir, for your remarkable contribution in organizing the event and for your hospitality. I also want to express again my sincere appreciation to the current presidency of the Community of Democracies, Romania, which was represented today by His Excellency Foreign Minister Orescu. Romania has had a long and sustained commitment to the Community of Democracies, and without its ongoing support and assistance, the organization of this conference would not have been possible. And finally, let me commend uh, efforts made by the staffs of both countries' Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the staff at the Permanent Secretariat of the Community of Democracies for their work in making this event happen. Excellencies, Governing Council members, civil society representatives, distinguished guests and friends, let me just say with certainty that the following two days of this global conference is going to be fruitful and I think it will substantially expand our knowledge regarding the prevention of violent extremism. So thank you, and now I'd like to introduce the moderator of the following uh, set of presentations, Mr. Julian Fota, who is Director General of the Romanian Diplomatic Institute and an Associate Professor at the National Intelligence Academy. Mr. Fota will moderate the remaining sessions. Mr. Fota, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Secretary General Garrett, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies. قبل ما تخرجوا ما تنسوش تابعوا في لاشين يوتيوب، وبارتجيو الفيديو ديروا جيم، وتابعوا الدار على مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي.